Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is Logic Apps and calling .NET Framework custom code assemblies. So these would be assemblies that you already have, perhaps from your BizTalk projects or other places, and you want to be able to plug them in to our new model of supporting .NET Framework inside of Logic Apps. So let's go ahead, let's dive in. All right, so I'm sure you've heard, we recently announced the public preview of .NET Framework custom code for Azure Logic Apps standard. I'll include a link to that video in the description of this one in case you've missed it. I do suggest you start there because I'm not going to sort of rehash all the, everything that was discussed in that video. And so you might get lost on a few points. So do start there and then come back. And because uh, in that uh, particular video, I do talk about how you can use our new Logic Apps workspace template in order to provision your function project and your Logic Apps project and all of the, you know, the inner workings are already taken care of for you using that model. Now, in this video, I want to discuss how we can bring in an existing assembly and how we can plug that in to this model and go ahead and leverage those previous in investments that you've already made. Like I said, that could be BizTalk or that could just be from other .NET projects that you might have. Now, one thing you will see when we talk about this is that in the functions project, the .NET framework runtime we are using is 4.7.2. So if you are bringing in other assemblies in, you need to make sure they're 4.7.2 or lower. Uh, we, we don't have support for 4.8, so that's just something to be aware of. So that's, um, yeah, that's the intro. Let's go ahead, let's get into more details here. Okay, so this is my the basis of my solution. So what I have here is a BizTalk solution. I've got a helper class or helper assembly here called contoso.hcm.helper. And I have a static class with a method I want to call. So it's quite simple, but doesn't need to be complex in this case. So what I've done is I've got this built, I've got the assembly, and I want to be able to use this in my Logic Apps solution. So how do I go about referencing, especially if you're more familiar with Visual Studio, this might be a new concept for you. So inside of the functions project that gets provisioned for you when you go through the experience. So if you haven't gone through that experience, uh, go ahead and check out my first video. Uh, this will make more sense at that point. You've got a functions project provisioned, you've got a workflow project provisioned, and then you're going to have this workspace. Now, in if you open up this CS proj, basically this project file for your function, you're going to see some existing references. You can see like the target framework is .NET 472, functions version is 4, it's a library, and we've got some package references. So these are references that we include for NuGet packages that are required for our stuff to work. Now what you can do is include reference statements and then provide the path to the assembly that you want to reference. Now I've got two examples here. The top one is uh, basically my absolute path. I've got the entire path here. It is commented out, but I'm just including it in case you want to do it that way. Maybe you've got like a network folder that you, you map and you want to pull from there. Otherwise, you can go ahead and use a relative path. And so here you can see it's bin, debug, net472, et cetera. And if you're unsure, like, how do you get to that file or, you know, make sure that path is correct, start with the folder that your csproj file is in. And basically, that's exactly what's happening here. This is going to run in the context of where this file is. It's going to jump into the bin folder and then traverse down that particular path. You can see another example of this, basically in Explorer. Right, so here we're in bin debug net 472, and then there's another bin folder underneath it, and that's where we're going to see the file. So that's what's what's going on here. Now, another thing to call out, uh, I'm not demoing this in this video, but it, it does work, is like if you've got a NuGet package, maybe you, you package your assemblies already using that method, uh, go ahead and, and use that here as well. Like you would just go into terminal 
and then use like the add new package command in order to go ahead and get that linked up here. But uh, packages will work just as well as this. You know, choose your, choose your own adventure. Now, one thing that we do take care of, which is really important, is we do have a build task as part of the functions project. And the whole idea is that we want to go ahead and basically copy, you know, any sort of dependent assemblies into the Logic Apps project. So that's what's going to happen. Like here, we've got like this contoso.htm.helper, the existing assembly that we want to bring in. After the build task, that's going to end up in lib custom net 472. And so we do take care of that for you. And, you know, a question that does come up a little bit when we talk about custom code with Logic Apps is like, how do I manage it? And it's like, it doesn't really matter. Like you can manage it how you manage existing life cycles. The bottom line is that before the Logic App runs, it needs to be able to find the assemblies in lib custom net 472. So you can have build tasks, you can have CI CD pipelines, whatever you need to do, go ahead and do so. But as long as your dependencies are in this folder before that Logic App gets deployed and run, then you're gonna be in good shape. And so that's kind of the, the key message there. Now there is, let's get into a demo, but one thing I did wanted to make sure that was explicit is like, you still need to have a wrapper function to call existing assemblies. It's not like you can, you know, with BizTalk where you've got say an expression shape and you just go ahead and, and reference that assembly. We need this, like this wrapper, this plumbing, um, as a way to basically make this callable from the code action itself. So what you're going to do is you're always going to have to wrap it. You're always going to have to, you know, put this function name and, and have a task and a, and a method and the workflow action trigger in order to call. Then you can reference it, right? So here it's a static method. So I'm just basically going to go ahead and call it. So that will work. That's fine. But I won't directly be able to call contoso.hcm.helper from my logic app workflow itself. I need to, to, to plug into basically our model here. So let's flip over to VS Code and let's see this in action. Okay, so once again, let's take a look at our CS proj, right? I've got these references. The top one is, is commented out, which is fine. If we go ahead and click on reveal in File Explorer, that's where we should be able to see this path, right? Here's my CS proj, then I've got bin, I've got debug, net472, then I got bin, and I've got my file here. So that's that's what we're what we're targeting. That's where we want to go after. All right. So what's going to happen is we can do a .NET build. So let's come down to here. I've got a terminal open. I'm in the functions project, as you can see. And here we go. We've gone ahead and you know built out our assemblies and the dependencies. So this gets refreshed lib custom net 472 and here is our helper and then here is like the custom code itself. One thing I think was probably worth calling out here as well, if we come over here, I've got two functions now within this class. And so what did I do to do this? So I, I went and just copied this and then I pasted it here. Now I need to make sure this is different, right? So it's called run, this can't be called run. Uh, you need to give this another, another name. The other thing you need to do is you need to give the function name, uh, this has to be unique. So you need to change that as well. Then modify your input output parameters as you see fit. Once again, when we build this, we're gonna have two folders here, like one for each function. And in this case, let's look at the function.json. This is that contract that is going to be used by the code action to basically establish our inputs and outputs. So this is a very important concept. And once again, build tasks will take care of getting this into the Logic App project as well. So let's head over to our workflow here. Here it is here. And so let's, let's just delete this just to show how this works. So let's go ahead, let's add an action. Just go ahead and search for local. Go ahead, call a local function in this logic app. Now this drop down here, right? We've got two entries. And the reason why we have two entries is because of these two folders here. And when we select one of these, let's go ahead and select weather forecast, right? We're gonna see the parameters that it's looking for. 
but if we go ahead and select this prepend, parameters are gonna be different. So that's this dynamic content, that's why those folders are so important. Now here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna hard code a value. Uh, all we're gonna do is prepend some text to this. Let's just, just put a number in here, and we don't have any sort of payload that's going on here. So let's go ahead and save this, and we can now go ahead and debug. This will still work, so let's go to here. And we've got a breakpoint already set up. So let's go run and debug. Let's select Logic App first. This will take probably 30 seconds or so to start up. So I'll pause the recording. Okay, so we know it's done when we see the following. We've got the endpoint set up. We've got the basically our workflow action trigger. So preprint HR string is available. And we've got our workflow dispatcher. So that looks good. Let's go and then add the .NET functions to the debug experience, and that should be set. So let's go over to Overview. Let's find our workflow and then click on Overview. And we know we're in good shape when we see the complete URL and we see the Run Trigger button. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now we're kicked off over into our workflow. So here, Got my input value of 99. Now we're not going to be able to, you know, step into this. I probably could get that working because there, if you have like the what is it, the PDB file. But for now, we're just being able to sort of uh, call around it, if you will, and step through this. Now I'm going to do this manually so I don't mess up my Camtasia recording. So we can see the return value now. We have it up here as well, so we can see that the SP dash was was prepended to that. So now let's just go ahead and continue. Head back over to Overview. We've got a new entry. We can go ahead and click on it and see exactly what was passed in and what was passed out. So that works. Thanks for checking out this video. Hope you are enjoying custom code with Azure Logic Apps. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Uh, you're obviously on YouTube. Thanks for checking this out. Likes, subscribes, comments, all welcome. Thanks and take care.